Oh. Oh, here's the other one right here. It's discouraging because we're so close. Let's see if I remember how to do this. I know. I hate this job sometimes. Oh no. We are heading to the vet clinic and getting some answers. Morning guys, it is uh, Tuesday. It is also my firstborn's 22nd birthday. Is it called a champagne birthday when your birthday, like your age matches the day you were born? So he's 22 on the 22nd of November, which is pretty special. The problem is he is not here. <laughs> he is in Texas on a service call. Mark informed me last night that he went and bought himself a Dallas Cowboys ticket so that was kind of nice i don't think it was cheap though so <laughs> happy birthday to yourself i guess speaking of jack we are dropping off his car to get some snow tires put on by our neighbor here who does all our car maintenance so i guess that's our birthday present to him is just like taking care of his life when he's out and about Well, the countdown is officially on because uh, today marks one week until lambing is scheduled to begin. So this is the time that I start to do the march down the alleyway just to make sure there's no early birds, but usually I can hear them before I see them. There are some blooming little udders, however. Yeah, I don't like this. That's blood. Right there. Huh. Oh, here we go. Mama. Oh. Oh. Looks pretty dry, so she's probably done. Darn it. Oh, here's the other one right here. Shoot. Oh. Two really nice size lambs. Nothing wrong with them. Well, obviously there's something wrong with them. Is this yours too? I do wonder if one was hers and one was that other one. Are they both yours? Maybe. Is that yours too? I hate it when you get this close to lambing and that happens. I do wonder if that one is not hers though. I wonder if the one came from the other one. I might move you. Yeah, safe to say. Uh, I think that second you also miscarried, this one right here. Because I found another dead lamb. Oh. <laughs> so right here. The, um, Miscarries that I've seen, like the early aborts on, on the sheep that I have, are typically, if it's about two weeks before lambing, I usually attribute it to like a chlamydia outbreak of some sort, and it usually uh, is my ewe lambs. Uh, this group has no ewe lambs in it. I mean, it could be chlamydia. Uh, these guys do look younger. They could be their second lambing, and if so, um, it could be just uh, a minor little bug going through, but... It also just could be nature. It's just, it's discouraging because we're so close. I am on chore duty again today because Carissa is still not well. Uh, she messaged me last night and just said, um, asked if I could do chores again just because uh, she went to the dairy farm last night and barely made it through chores. So I said, yes, I will do it all week. I will do it for as long as it, as it requires. I just need her to get feeling better. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's a stomach bug. She just can't get, can't shake. So anyway, I hope it's nothing more than that. I'm going to get these lambs gathered up and, uh, I actually might throw them in a bag 
put them in a freezer, and then if we run into any more issues, then I have some lambs to take to a lab. Typically, what Rex has always told me is wait till you're at about 5%. If you're at 5% of like miscarries like this, then we take them to the lab, get some results, and figure out what, what the bug is. So I'm gonna collect them, throw them in the freezer before I start chores. See if I can chase down these ewes and mark them with uh, a spray can of paint. can't put you in here yet because we need to do some work. So this is when I'm kind of caught with my um, <laughs> caught with my work not done. It won't let me add a season so I have to ask the guys how to do that because if not it's going to tag it onto my onto my fall lambing which is actually recorded as spring lambing. It's a we need, we need to get this cleaned up. I should have done this a while ago. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record these use but I'm not gonna record it here. I'm gonna put it on my notes and then once we get this all cleaned up, I'll go in and add it to this lambing group. I do want to keep track of this and uh, the stillborns. I'm going to assume she had two. She's a bigger ewe, a lot more conditioning, um, and a lot more mess. And those lambs were quite, like, messy. Um, this one looks just like mom. She's been all over it. It's licked dry. The other two were wet, so I'm assuming she had one and this big U had two, and that's how I'm gonna record it. It's not 100%, um, but when they're dead, when you get here and they're not with their lambs, you kind of have to do some guessing. Okay, let's scan you again. All right, 502. Too fast, I can't read it. 199603. Single. Oh boy, Ram, November 22nd, it's written there. All right, let's get this other one recorded. Five zero two one nine nine four one one. They were in the same group, lambing, like in the same lambing group, because those numbers are really close. All right, I'm gonna say you had twins. So yeah, they're in my notes now. Okay, I gotta do chores. Let you guys out. Oh, I'm gonna spray you first. Why couldn't there be some more lambs in the imposter? Uh. All right. I know. I hate this job sometimes. 
This is agony. I'm really sorry. Why can't the good ones be alive? Good morning. It is Wednesday. Uh, I'm starting the day off helping Mark move some equipment down the road while everything is frozen because we're getting into these swings. So cool at night, kind of warm during the day. So below zero, above zero. And uh, although good for early morning, if you want to transport things on a gravel road, it's bad for everything else. It's not great for the barn. Uh, everything gets kind of moist. But other than that, it's beautiful. It's sunny, it's crisp. The ladies are outside. Ladies meaning golden girls are looking at me right now. Right up there. Hey. Not good. It is official, winter sucks. That was quite an ordeal. <laughs> uh, and the tires on that tender trailer are kind of garbage too. Um, yeah, we're just in that melt thaw. For the rest of the morning, I have to run to my local farm store and get all my lambing kit supplies because we are down to six days and I have no supplies. I have no, uh, I have no colostrum. I have no calcium. I have no supplies. So if I have any use go down with preg talks or anything, I'm like, I'll be scrambling. So I have about an hour and a half this morning. I'm going to run and do that. And then I have to come home quick. We have to get changed. And my, f uh, we have a funeral actually for my friend's dad who, uh, passed away last week. So uh, we have to run down there and then Mark has to be back to fill a truck for, with corn at four, I think. And then I'm gonna finish hoof trimming when we get back. Our haul for the day. I've got my bobcat seat. Woohoo! I've got RFA B tags. We've got calcium, dextrose, lube, paint, gloves, uh, selenium, and colostrum. Bam. Just got back from a funeral, and uh, as much as I do not like funerals. Um, I got to see a few friends I haven't seen in ages and uh, like close friends who I adore. So although the circumstances are awful, um, I'm so grateful that I got to see them even for half an hour. Uh, we kind of had to turn and burn because uh, Mark had a truck call when we were on our way and he's like, I'm gonna be at your place by 3.30 and we're like, it's after one right now. We're not even there yet. It's always hard losing someone. It's hard losing a family member. Yeah, I'm just uh, thinking about her and her family and uh, all the people that loved and um, was a big part of their life. 
So good to see everybody today, but um, you know, it's always sad saying goodbye. All right, I'm gonna set up to hoof trim. I know you guys have seen this a million times. You've seen it in my last video, so I'm not gonna make you, I'm not gonna make you go through that. <laughs> oh no. Lady. Doesn't look so good. DOA. It's a DOA. Mama had this stillborn and ran away, so I don't even know which one she is, so I have to go for a hunt. It's getting late, and uh, so this looks a little curved, but the true sign is the spine. And spine seems fine. And there's no deformity in the face. Just early. Hmm. Well, I got the other ones in a bag in my freezer, so I'm gonna put this in the bag and I am gonna take them to the vet because if there's something going on, I need to know sooner than later. I'm probably not right at 5%, but I'm close enough that uh, I have to do something here. I gotta find that mom. I got mama in the uh, first little lambing pen here and uh, she's more interested in eating than actually missing her lamb so I don't know what's going on we'll get her number recorded I'm gonna put it on my notes again on my phone like yesterday and then tomorrow when I have my call with flock watch I'll see if we can change that season so I can enter in these lambs as their own group I am wondering if her number matches the other two ladies I think they were born in the same season um, they're fairly young, so I'm wondering if this is a second lambing or, yeah, probably a second lambing. If so, I'm wondering if we're having a bit of a chlamydia break, um, which might mean we have to start giving boosters. Hmm. Hello. They're like, why does she get the food? Can I ask me number, Mama? Oh, you're a 502. Oh, the other ones were two. 502, 199, 583. Five eight three. Single. So yeah, all three of these ewes that aborted, uh, 502-199-603, 502-199-411, So I'm thinking they were born probably pretty close together, which means they've gone through the whole cycles together. So whether we had some bad vaccine or um, something's going, it might not even be chlamydia. I'm just throwing it out there, but if I had my guess, I'm not liking that all three are close in age. Okay, Mark's calling. Hello. Oh, we don't have anything. Morning. It is uh, Thursday and I have loaded up the truck with my deceased lambs. We are heading to the vet clinic and getting some answers. My gut is telling me we're having a bit of a chlamydia break. That's my gut. I'm going to text Rex, but I think I might just as preventative get, run those ewes through the handling system this afternoon when I'm done hoof trimming and give them all a, uh, a preventative shot of a like a tetracycline. I haven't had to do this since the very first flock I had in here uh, 10 years ago. 10 and a bit years ago actually. I don't like giving an antibiotic without getting like a, a test result before um, and I hate waiting for test results to come back if indeed they come back positive mm -hmm. and I could have prevented other ones from having dead lambs. All right well the morning has disappeared on us productive, but I feel like I still haven't got anything done. I was talking to Mark this morning. I was talking to Belinda first this morning, then I was talking to Mark, and uh, 
I just told them I feel I would say embarrassed just because I feel like I'm such a rule follower. Like I follow what my vet says to do. I do the vaccines on time. I try to do what's always laid out for me and I like systems and I like to be organized. And I said to Mark, like, it just never fails. I still seem to start lambing out this way. And it's, and it's frustrating and it's embarrassing. And I've been doing this for 10 years. It's not like I shouldn't know what I'm doing, but um, I don't know. Maybe it's a sheep thing. <laughs> Maybe we're never supposed to know everything. But I do feel like everyone I follow on social media that has sheep doesn't have problems. I feel like that anyway. And then, you know... Um, now I have more exposure and I feel like people look at me and go, uh, just think I'm a failure. So, um, you don't have to comment that, uh, I don't know what I'm doing because I feel the same way a lot of the time. Look how nice the barn looks though. It's nice and warm today. done. I'm trying to think. I write everything down on my planner when I do these groups, but they, they were really bad and I haven't had a group this bad in a long time unless they just grew really fast in the pack. So yeah, they were long. Um, it was a fairly big group. It was like 106, I think, but I should easily be able to do 100 in a couple days. So I don't know what's going on. I'm going to have to look at my planner and see when they usually get done. I might have missed them because I was in the fields. Um, but anyway, they are going to get done again before before lambing, so the second time around will be easy. But all my hooves this year have been phenomenal. Like, it has taken me no time at all, and I think it's attributed to doing it more often. Unless this is just a group of bad ewes with, like, when I say bad ewes, I mean ewes with genetically just bad feet. But I'm not really sure. This is when I'm glad I have a lot of records because I decided I was texting Rex and I'm like, Sandy, how about you make sure those ewes were indeed from the same group? But they were not. Uh, one was born in June of 2020. The other two were born in September of 2020. However, it doesn't really matter when they were born. It matters when I bred them for the first time because that's before I breed them for the first time. That's when they get their chlamydia vac vaccinations. So now I'm going to go on to my old Gallagher data here to see if I can indeed find when they were vaccinated for the first time and just see if there's something that uh, I can correlate to what's going on here. So the one thing that they have all three had in common is that they were, well, two things they have in common is they were all open after their first uh, breed and that's the one they were actually given the chlamydia vaccine for so my question would be to Rex I'm gonna I'm gonna call him right now actually and say the question is is the does the vaccine work if they don't lamb like if if you give that vaccine to them and they don't actually have a lamb if they're open should I have given that vaccine 
the next time I bred them, even though it's in their system. Like, does the does that should that vaccine not work for a year? Because if so, they were bred in that same year. So that would be my question for that, because all three were open. The other thing that all three had in common is is that they were they all did successfully breed in that natural group last October. So was there something going on in that October group that I didn't see? But they all lambed successfully in March, except for that one. She did have one stillborn out of a set of three. Oops. Sorry, Lucy. So I'm confused. Um, and then the other thing, three, and then the other thing they had in common is they all successfully got bred in July. So I got a lot of information just by like writing dates and times of when I do things. It's important because when something like this comes up and it literally knocks me on my keister because I'm I'm so frustrated, and I like I just automatically assume I've done everything wrong. It's like, huh, maybe. Maybe just some math isn't aligning here. So I'm gonna text Rex. I'm gonna call Rex and I'll let you guys know what he says. Just got off my uh, half an hour phone call slash therapy session with my vet Rex. Uh, he said, as I thought, that I am overreacting until we have 5%. So he told me to do nothing, to sit on my hands because we do not know what these youths have. And he said, when it's under 5%, sometimes it's nothing. It's just nature and it sucks. Uh, we did have a good conversation on my chlamydia vaccine regime, and he said, um, when a you, so when I give them their initial two shot system and I breed them and then they're open, he said those ones would be maybe good to have a redo if there's too long until the next breed. So it's just, it was a good conversation because when you're done that original vaccination, um, you, it kind of goes out of mind because I've only have ever done that vaccine once. He said, we can look at doing an annual bo booster if I choose to, but he said, let's wait and get the results on this before we start making a whole bunch of plans that don't need to get made. Um, I also asked him why this stuff keeps happening and like, why do I feel like I'm the only one that has dead lambs at the beginning of every lambing? And he said, a lot of my clients that are around the same size as you, of you as you easily have a couple dead lambs at the beginning. So he said, don't feel bad. That made me feel a lot better, uh, especially Rex, because he will easily tell me that I'm the only one as well. He shoots straight from the hip, whether I want to hear it or not. And uh, But he was very gracious today and said that I was not the only one. So I feel a little better about that. I'm just stressed and I was really looking forward to lambing kind of going off without a hitch, especially when you get so close and nothing wrong has happened. You're like, I'm almost there, I'm almost there, and I have so much fun stuff that I want to do over the next few days in the barn. Unfortunately, sometimes we have no control over what they decide my day is going to look like. So anyway, thanks guys for being patient with me. Um, it is getting dark already, and uh, I have to feed these girls that I just hoof trimmed. So I should probably wash my hands too. Ew.